everybody! My name's Harriet and I run Sew Me Sunshine which is a fabric and haberdashery store in the UK and we ship worldwide. Please check our website out and if you ever have any questions you can always drop us an email on our website. So today I'm here to talk to you about sustainability and hopefully you'll find this video really useful. It's just going to talk you through about sustainability specifically around the text style industry so what I'm going to do is give you an overview of what sustainability is and then link it into textiles now there is a lot that can be said about sustainability so I won't be able to cover everything in this video so what I've done is I've tried to cover what I think we would as home sewists find really useful and hopefully it'll just give you a little bit of insight into into sustainability and how you can make your sewing a little bit more sustainable at home. So first of all I'm going to just give you a definition on sustainability. So like I've already mentioned it's a really broad term and what it means is that you're able to meet your own needs without compromising future generations. So what we can do with sustainability is that we can break it down into three sections. It's also known as the three pillars of sustainability. So the first pillar of sustainability or the first section of sustainability is social. So companies want to be able to promote fairness and respect for the individuals that work for them. So within the textile industry, we're looking at the fact that they're going to be treated fairly and with respect and with dignity. So to give you some examples that factory workers in textile industries we're looking for them to be paid fairly we're looking for safe working conditions we're looking for no child labor so those are just some examples within the social element of um, a sustainable textile industry um, what came to mind for me when I was looking into the social element of sustainability was the Rana Plaza disaster in 2013 when over 1,000 people died when the factory collapsed um, and that was purely due to a structural failure and that was a huge disaster, a really awful thing that happened um, but that really brings to mind why it's really important that we look at the social sustainability element when we're looking to buy textiles. So the next um, pillar of sustainability or the next section is economic. So for a business to be sustainable, it needs to make profit. So businesses need to make money and we all know that. Now you kind of will think, well, how's that going to be related straight to kind of the textile industry and how to make the textile industry more sustainable? Well, if a business is making more making profit, then they're able, they're in a position to look at making their business more sustainable on a social and an environmental aspect. So it might mean that they then look at their recycling elements or um, look at you know getting certified for different industries within the textile industry like organic cotton or um, getting a tensile certification and things like that so we by them ha making profit they're therefore able to meet the other pillars of sustainability so the last element of sustainability is the one that most of us will probably think of first and that is environment. So what obviously we're looking for is we're looking for companies to take into account the environment when they're manufacturing textiles. So like I said that's something that I think well it's something that myself and I'm sure a lot of you at home think of first whenever you think of sustainability and within the fashion industry obviously the term sustainability is thrown about everywhere. Um, you might have heard of the word greenwashing uh, which obviously refers to when um, fashion companies or high street fashion might use a term that gets in order to sell the product to you. So they might say oh well we now recycle clothing for you if you come into store for example. Um, but it's kind of looking at the bigger picture like where is that clothing getting recycled is it actually getting recycled or is it actually them just taking it to a landfill so it's looking at like the bigger picture um and that's why we always think about we might use the term greenwashing but 
that element of sustainability is what we think of first is the environment so and that's kind of what I'm going to talk a little bit more about today is the fact that I'm going to look at some of the textiles that you will find in fabric shops like ours and how they are more sustainable in an environmental aspect so it goes without saying no fabric is 100% sustainable. It can't be, right? Um, because no matter how you produce fabric, it is going to use like excess water and it is going to eventually end up potentially um, thrown away or at some point in its lifespan. So you can't, I can't t turn around to you and say, right, this is the fabric that's gonna be sustainable and environmentally friendly for you to sew with no fabric is however there are fabrics that obviously are seen as more sustainable than others and that's what i think as home sewists it's really important for us to be aware of so that we can make conscious choices in order to make our home sewing slightly more sustainable so I'm sure none of us would be surprised that the fashion industry is one of the largest contributors to worldwide pollution. And I found some really quite shocking statistics in my research for this presentation. So to give you an idea, 7,500 litres of water are needed to produce just one single pair of jeans. And according to the UN Conference on Trade and Development, about 93 billion cubic metres of water are used annually by the fashion industry. That is huge. <laughs> I was really shocked by that. So why is it obviously a polluter, obviously apart from the fact that it uses it? a huge amount of water to produce textiles, but it also um, contributes to microplastic pollution. It also contributes to green gas, greenhouse gas emissions, soil degradation, rainforest destruction, and obviously as again, I'm sure we're all aware of landfill waste. Um, so those are kind of the elements that why the, unfortunately the textile industry isn't the best thing for the environment. Um, but we do have, like I mentioned, some textiles that can be grouped together as slightly more environmentally friendly than others. And these textiles you'll find are either the natural textiles or recycled textiles. Um, and they are normally manufactured as well as being natural and being um, recycled. Some of these will be manufactured in a way that is using more sustainable practices so it means that it's lower impact on on the world so things like using closed loop systems whereby they will be reusing water uh, or recycling the toxics um, toxic elements sorry from the production of textiles um, during the manufacturing process so i'm going to now go through some of the fabrics that we stock here and lots of other fabric shops as well stock so that it gives you an idea of different uh, fabrics that is deemed slightly more sustainable so the first fabric i'm going to talk about is linen so i'm going to talk about 100 percent linen because it's important to realize that when linen is blended with other um, types of fabric that will impact on its sustainability so I'm going to specifically refer to 100% linen. So 100% linen is seen as a sustainable fibre. This is an example of one of our 100% linens we've got in stock. It's one of our enzyme wash linens. And the reason it is seen as sustainable is that it's linen is cut comes from the flax plant and this plant grows naturally and requires no additional water other than rainwater to grow and it is because it's a natural fiber it's biodegradable and recyclable so obviously if it was to end up in a landfill which would be awful but if it was it would break down it's also important to note though that sometimes um, because linen is quite a rough fabric it um, is softened sometimes with chemicals um, and that obviously be bad for the environment using a lot of toxic chemicals but you can find um, 
linen fabrics have been softened in more environmentally friendly ways such as this one is um, an enzyme wash linen so it's actually been um, naturally softened using enzymes and no chemicals have been used so that means it's better obviously for the environment um, another thing to think of with linen is that it's actually really hard wearing as well so what's really good about that it means you'll get a lot of wear out of it it's not going to it's going to last you a very long time um, especially if you make trousers or a jacket it's so hard wearing and as long as obviously it does fray so you know thinking about how you finish your seams um, it will just mean that you obviously extend the uh, lifespan of the garment that you make and that's what's special about us as sewists is that we can do different things like doing um, a specific type of seam when using linen and that which will mean that it lasts a lot longer than maybe um, a linen garment that you buy from the high street so the next text I'm going to talk about is organic cotton. So you guys are probably all aware of the term GOTS certified. So GOTS is the company that gives the certification for organic and that refers to Global Organic Textile Standard. And I'm sure you guys will be um, aware of the logo that is commonly found, but for a textile or clothes to be referred to as organic it's got to be certified with GOTS. Um, so for it to be certified it's got to be contain at least 70% of organic fibres and these fibres or cotton fibres are grown without the use of pesticides, herbicides and genetic modified organisms and they've got to use principles of organic agriculture and as well as looking at the environmental aspect to become obviously got certified it also has to look at the again a social element the social sustainability side so um, that means that it covers things like safe working conditions no child labor and fair pay so it's a really sustainable fabric um, so if you're looking to make something out of cotton then this is a um, organic cotton is is really really um, a good fabric to think about using so with organic cotton you'll find it obviously as a woven fabric and you will find it quite commonly in um, jersey fabrics this is one of our 100 percent cotton jersey fabrics it's really lovely and soft um, and it would be perfect for making a lightweight jumper or sweatpants so it's quite, like I said, it's quite commonly found more in a jersey criteria, but to, it's important to note that sometimes organic cotton will be blended with elastane. Now the elastane obviously will affect how the fabric is then broken down and it will take longer because it's not a completely natural um, textile when the elastane has been blended in. So if it would be better if you try and find um, knit or woven organic cotton fabrics that are 100% organic cotton because then it's completely natural fi um, fabric and it will biodegrade. So another um, cotton certification you might come across in, in fabric shops like ours or even in the high street is BCI. So BCI refers to the Better Cotton Initiative. Now on paper, that initiative sounds great <laughs> um, because what, it's aim what they're aiming to do is to make the cotton industry more sustainable. So similar, I suppose you would say, to um, having a cotton got certified. However, it is different to organic cotton. So with the BCI, it's got seven principles that cotton farmers are advice to follow in order to be certified a BCI farm. Now that was the key thing there is that the fact that they are advised. So nothing is um, kind of checked, it's, it's not binding, so therefore you can't be 100% sure that um, these farmers are following all seven principles. So that's kind of the 
the worry it's great in, th in on paper the fact that you've got you know this cotton initiative where they're looking to make it more sustainable where they're looking to you know make sure it's more environmentally friendly processes are being used and the fact that there's social elements within the seven principles but like i said it's not binding so we can't be sure that when you're buying cotton that is certified by the Get better cotton initiative that all of those principles have been met. Um, and I suppose another kind of red flag with the BCI is the fact that it's seen so much in the fast fashion industry. Um, you see it quite a lot of people, of um, when I was just doing some research online where high streets are saying, oh, this cotton's from B is P BCI registered. And like I said, it's great in theory, but it, in some respects it's looking like, oh, it might not be as sustainable as it looks like it is, as if it's making out it is. Um, so in some respects, almost greenwashing. Um, so it's something to bear in mind with BCI. Yes, it's great, it's better than it's bog standard cotton, but is it, it's nowhere near as um, good as going for something that is um, got certified. Um, there's also, I went from my research for um, within BCI found as well there has been links to forced labour as well with its production so it is a bit of a worry and also it is a worry the fact that you know by bringing in BCI is it going to therefore make other industries not go for GOTS because they'll be like oh well we're BCI certified so it's got its problems as well as obviously it's got potentially really good things as well so Lady McElroy, well-known uh, fabric brand we all love um, in the sewing community, does some lovely gorgeous cotton lawns and really beautiful prints. Now they have made the step whereby all their cottons are now BCI, are B, from BCI farms and they've got the certifications as well. It's not just them saying it, they've got the um, documents to show it. And like I said, it is great as long as those um, farms are actually following all the seven principles. Um, so the last um, cotton type I'm gonna briefly touch on is fair trade cotton. So I'm sure we're all aware of fair trade chocolate or coffee and within the cotton industry what it's doing is it's looking to encourage sustainability by providing economic benefits so what it's doing is going to guarantee fair trade minimum prices and fair trade premium prices for the seed cotton farmers so by making obviously the um a certain a fixed price it means that obviously there's no undercutting and things like that and it means that the farmers are get, all getting paid paid fairly and therefore the workers are getting paid fairly as well. So moving on from cotton we're going to talk about viscose. So viscose is quite commonly um, cited as a sustainable fibre because they say it's sustainable because it's from made from wood pulp um, which is obviously a renewable plant source however viscose can't be seen as sustainable because it isn't quite a hundred percent um a natural product and in order for it for the wood pulp to be turned into this into viscose it needs chemicals need to be added to, to the process and these chemicals are toxic and they're released into the air and waterways surrounding the factories also um, there's been concerns around because obviously it's made from uh, wood pulp there's been um, worries around the fact that it's contributing to um, forest deforestation as well because obviously these um, trees need to be cut down in order to make viscose and then are they actually being replanted are we affecting you know animals habitats and things along those lines and then the other thing that is always a bit of a worry with viscose, and I'm sure you're aware again as the home sewer, the massive range in prices with viscose. So you get a lot of what I'd say on the cheaper end of viscose, and you see it a lot of times used in the brand, high street brands that are kind of well known for fast fashion. So with the viscose, you know, the fact that it's so, it can become so cheap, you know, why <laughs> does that mean therefore the workers aren't getting paid fairly does it mean that the workers are working in an unsafe environment 
in order to produce the viscose um, so you've got the social element as well to think about there's you know it, it might not be um, and then obviously with the fast fashion industry using viscose a lot of these garments are just going to end up in landfill because obviously trends change and things get moved on um, and obviously viscose won't uh, biodegrade quickly either um, so yeah uh, that's kind of viscose in a nutshell i i do love viscose as a fiber as an as a as a textile to work with but what i'm going to do is i am going to talk to you a little bit about um alternatives to viscose that are viscose but have the certifications in place that make them a more sustainable viscose fabric so the first viscose fabric I'm going to highlight to you is bamboo. So you'll see a lot of bamboo um, jerseys, more so than um, bamboo used in woven fabrics, but obviously they do exist. And bamboo or is viscose, because viscose is made from wood pulp. It's just a type of viscose that has been made with the bamboo plant. And it's cited as a more sustainable um, type of viscose because bamboo grows naturally um, and is a fast growing crop that requires no fertilizer and it self regenerates from its own roots so as soon as it's obviously cut down it grows again I've got bamboo in our, my garden and it, it does grow like really quickly um, but like um, you'll probably be getting a bit of a trend with this but there's no regulations around bamboo. So although it is a fast growing crop and although it doesn't require water and it doesn't require, and it self regenerates, we don't know whether this bamboo that has got, we've got for the textile is actually from a, a factory that is actually, you know, cutting down large areas in order to grow bamboo. Um, so that's quite common, like for example, with palm oil it's a very different topic but obviously I've been lucky enough to go to Borneo and you see these plantations of palm trees for palm oil and you literally will see like a, the rainforest on one side of a mountain and then another side you'll see it's just the rainforest has been destroyed for palm oil plantations so it's similar to the bamboo industry and in the fact that you know yes it's it's fast growing yes it doesn't it's it's easy crop to grow but we don't know whether actually you know deforestation is actually occurring in order to have the crop planted so that you grow it in order to make it into a bamboo viscose also it uses a lot of chemicals so bamboo is you is known in the kind of sewing world it's a really lovely soft um fiber against the skin but the for it to be soft uh, like it is um chemicals that are highly toxic are um used to, to make it happen and these are obviously will be hazardous and they can't be recaptured and reused so obviously that's bad for the environment so the next few fabrics I'm going to talk about are certified fabrics and they've been certified by a company called Lensing. I'm sure you have heard of Lensing before. So they certify um, quite a few different fabrics that I'm just going to highlight. And what is good about the company Lensing is that it promotes social welfare. So not only does it use practices that are um, positive for the environment they also look at their um, at employer employers um, of the factories that are looking to get a certification from lensing they have to meet a social element so it means that obviously it looks at like safe working conditions um, that the workers are getting paid fairly that there's no child labor and so on so Lensing is the company that owns and trademarks specific fabrics that are certified by them. So one of the um, fabrics that I'm going to talk about that Lensing certifies is Eco Vero Viscose. So 
When a fabric is called an eco vero viscose, which we commonly see in sewing shops like ours at Sony Sunshine and on the high street, it means that lensing has certified that the viscose fibers used to make that um, fabric is um, eco vero viscose fibers. So it's met the principles that they've put in place in order for that factory to gain the certification to be able to say that their fibers are eco vero viscose fibers. So like I already mentioned with lensing, there is social elements that they have to meet in order to gain that certification. And then when it comes to eco vero viscose, it also looks at meeting high environmental um, standards. So for example, the wood used to make the viscose is from renewable sources sources and also it uses a really kind of a better way of producing it so the, the way it's manufactured is better um, which means that it uses less water and also it produces less emissions so um, according to lensing website it produces 50 percent less um, em emissions than your bog standard viscose um, production and also what's a really big bonus with uh, lensing is that um, it's got a supply chain transparency so transparency is one of the key things with um, sustainability if we can go on to um, a brand and be able to look okay this is where their viscose fabric is an eco vero we can be reassured that therefore it's been certified because it's got that trademark and that it's met certain principles in order to gain that certification so it's always important to double check is this really um an eco vero viscose so it will be um, have the trademark symbol next to it um, shops like myself will be able to tell you yes um, we've seen the cert certification when it comes to high streets what you'll see is the logo for eco vero um, with the lensing logo and all these shops will get these um, the special kind of uh, logo tags to put in their clothing um, when they've been you know assessed and checked so that they've got the proper certification so the next textile i'm going to briefly talk about is lyocell so we see lyocell um quite a lot again as um on sewing um, fabric websites and lyocell is actually viscose viscose is also called rayon by the way just to highlight um so the difference between lyocell and viscose is the fact that obviously it's still from um harvested from um, wood sources but unlike viscose the solvent used to dissolve um, the wood pulp is an organic solvent so that's better for the environment and also the solvent and the water used in the production of lyocell can be reused can be not always so that's something to imp important to note so it can be so going back to the transparency aspect, how can we be sure that you've got a lyocell cell fabric that is actually going to use more environmentally friendly uh, ways of production and reuse the water and the solvents? Now that's when lensing comes into play because lensing also has a, um, a textile that they've trademarked, which we as um, sewists are all aware of, and that is tensile so tensile gets thrown around quite a lot um, as its own kind of fabric and yes it is its own fabric but essentially it is lyocell it's just a trademarked version of lyocell so it's trademarked by lensing um, and like eco vero there has to be certain things met um, by the factory by the manufacturing process and social elements met in order for that fabric to be called tensile and for it to be said that the fibers used to make the fabric are tensile and therefore certified so um when I was looking on their website you need they need to prove at least 30% of the fibers are specifically from tensile 
and what they do is that they use this closed loop um, production process and that's when the water is recycled and the solvents are reused in the solvent spinning process so when the um, wood pulp is used to make the fiber like I said the water is reused and um, the solvents are recycled as well so that's why it's more environmentally friendly um, tensile obviously it has a because it is a viscose has a feel and a draped similar to a viscose and like viscose you get different um weights to it as well so you might get viscose twills that obviously are heavier weight or you might get um like a viscose lawn and like a tensile lawn and that will be lighter more silky texture so that is what tensile is so it's really important again like eco vero get in touch with you know the person that's selling the fabric and just double check you know is this actually a certified or are you just calling it tensile which unfortunately sometimes happens um again it's a little bit easier in the ready to wear world because um lensing produce the uh, garment tags that will have the branding for you to be able to see but for example, we stock here at Somi Sunshine a lot of meat milk tensils and um, they all have the proper documentation that they can share with us that proves that the fibres used for their fabrics are actually, <coughs> sorry, um, actually tensile um, certified by lensing. So another um, type of viscose that I'm sure you've come across is modal. So modal is a type of rayon um, and it's manufactured from beech wood. Now you would have come across tensile modal and surprise surprise this is another trademark from the company Lensing. So um, by, make, by ensuring that you buy tensile modal you can be reassured that the beech wood used to make the um, modal fabric is from sustainably managed fo forests and also modal is renowned for its softness and um, lensing use um, a special technology called the EcoSoft technology um, and it offers a chlorine free bleaching and has high recovery rates of processed ingredients and causes very low air emissions. So it's a lot better for our planet and like I've mentioned many times obviously lensing also has the social elements as well so you can be reassured that um, workers are working safe working conditions and getting paid fairly and so on. So one of the other fabrics that you would have come across that is seen as a more sustainable fabric choice is Cupro. So Cupro is actually um, cotton but it's not like the cotton that we normally use in the sewing world, so things like cotton lawn or uh, quilting cotton. It is, make, Cupro is produced from a different part of the cotton plant. So it's produced from cotton linter and it gives, gives the fabric a very different feel to what you find from like a cotton lawn. So it's almost got like a silky soft touch to it and it drapes absolutely beautifully. It's often used instead of silk. Um, now the reason why it's seen as more sustainable is obviously it's made from cotton which is biodegradable and also it's using the part of the cotton plant that is often discarded when producing um, you know cotton lawn and so on so that's why it's um, seen as a more sustainable fabric choice now as well as that being great obviously we still don't have any kind of reassurance around the social elements or the environmental processes in order to make the cupro fabric yes it's great it's biodegradable yes it's great that um it's using a part of the cotton plant that is often thrown away but we can't be reassured that the other processes down the line um, are good for the environment and for the people that work to produce it 
but there is a certified type of Cupro. So similar to lensing certifying Tencel, you also have um, a trademark version of Cupro called Benberg and we're going to put up who it's produced for on the screen for you and these fabric fibres um, type of Cupro are manufactured using an environmentally friendly process so like Tensor it uses a closed loop system which enables the recovery and reuse of the major chemicals used to um, make Cupro which is copper and ammonia uh, while achieving zero emissions of waste. There is also elements on that when I was researching the brand around social um, sustainability as well. So um, Benberg Cupro is obviously the um, ideal type of Cupro that you'd be wanting to purchase when looking for Cupro. So silk is often cited as a sustainable fabric. Um, however, um, it is sustainable in the fact that obviously it's a natural product and it biodegrades. However, it, a lot of people don't find it a very ethical type of fabric. Um, and that's because obviously the silkworms are killed in the production of silk production. But there is types of silk that are now out there, something called a peace silk, um, peace, not like peas. <laughs> and um, what it does is it that it produces the silk after, so it uses the cocoons after the moths have evacuated them in order to produce the silk. So it means that the silkworms aren't getting harmed in order to put, to make the silk. Um, again, like all fabric production, it's important to realize that obviously chemicals are used to produce um, the silk. So again, it, it'd be useful to try and find um, silk that has been certified as organic. I'm just going to quickly, briefly explain Urcatex. Now, Urcatex is pronounced in lots of different ways across the globe. Um, uh, there's actually a video on YouTube that goes through it all, but um, in the UK we pronounce it Urcatex. And what's commonly found in the um, fabric shops like ours is you'll find that a fabric has been Urcatex 100 standard certified. So what that means is that the fabric has been tested that it hasn't got any um, top six substances that could be harmful to us humans that's it so it refers more to like the inks that have been used on the fabric that it's not any harmful inks being used so it's really useful for uh, companies producing um, children's wear for example they'll be looking to make sure that the fabric has been architex 100 standard certified however this it doesn't got anything to do with the production of the fabric or to do with the social sustainable elements to the fabric production. It's just about whether it's got harmful, toxic um, elements on the fabric. So it is often confused with GOT certification because you quite normally have hand in hand um, a GOT certified fabric and then it's also Urcatex um, 100 standard certified. So just to be bear in mind that yes, it's great um, for it to have this certification, but just having that certification doesn't mean that the fabric is sustainable. So I've gone over a lot of um, fabric types that are seen as a more natural fabrics, but you also get um, fabrics that are synthetic that are still can be deemed as a more sustainable option. I always look at these fabrics that if you're going to uh, make something that needs to be uh, made from a synthetic textile, then it will be good to try and choose a textile that has a sustainable element. So for example, at Sew Me Sunshine, we stock recycled polyester um, threads for your sewing products and projects, I should say, not products. But what what's good about that is it has the same um, quality as what you find from your polyester threads but it's been made from recycled polyester so it's actually made the threads that we stock are made from recycled water bottles um, so obviously there's lots of things that could be better than using a polyester but obviously a polyester thread is 
it's strong thread and it's hard wearing and long lasting which is great and then it also has the element the fact that um, it's actually a recycled product. Um, at So Me Sunshine we do stock a lot of activewear and swimwear fabrics and with those type of fabrics you know you're gonna look to use a synthetic fabric most of the time um, in particular nylon so what we've done is we have sourced um, some fabric um, some nylon fabric that is actually certified um, called Eco Nile. Now Eco Nile has exactly the same characteristics as virgin nylon in terms of performance so it's really strong and but it is manufactured in a more sustainable way because Eco Nile is made from um, recycled products so things like fishing nets it's made from um, so that's better um, and then also as well it uses a closed loop pr um, production process as well so similar to like tensile like I've mentioned and the Benberg uh, Cupro it loses a closed loop uh, process in production so it conserves water and it reduces the waste as well um, but it's also important to know that obviously like any synthetic fabric it can still shed microplastics so it's worth maybe when you're washing your garment when you've been when you've used a nylon fabric or an eco nylon fabric to either put it in a wash bag or wash it infrequently so just bear that in mind whenever using a synthetic fabric like eco nylon so something that I haven't quite put, um, spoken about with the sustainable element, but it's something that we think about at Sony Sunshine is, you know, the kind of the, the distance that a fabric has uh, traveled in order to get to us. So obviously a lot of fabric production that happens in China and Turkey, um, but we're always trying to, for example, because we're based in the UK, we're always trying to connect with European manufacturers, or for example, our Econile um, fabric actually gets printed um, in the UK so it's little elements like that will um, is something to bear in mind when you're looking to buy textiles because obviously the, by doing by buying textiles that obviously may be produced or or even just printed um, closer to you where you are based um, that is better for the environment so another way to make your sewing more sustainable, um, as well as looking at the fabric type that you're using, you could also um, obviously use secondhand fabric. Or if you've bought a fabric that you no longer is your style, or you bought it for a project and you're actually thinking, actually, you know what, I'm not into that colorway anymore, I've changed my mind, you know, always look at doing like uh, fabric swaps with friends or selling that fabric so that it goes to a home that it therefore is used and then you can use that money to buy something that you're um, more into or it's more appropriate for the type of project that you're looking to make. So that's one thing to bear in mind. Another thing is the use of reclaimed fabric. So the term dead stock, I'm sure you're all aware of, is used a lot, especially in the sewing community. Um, it also can be called ex-designer fabrics. Now, the problem with dead stock is that the term is used a lot on fabrics that officially aren't dead stock. They might be just known as actually overstock. So a lot of um, high street brands might produce so when they're producing the fabric in order to make the the kind of cost margins they might have to make a lot more meterage than they actually need for the production of a dress for example so that means that they keep the costs down and it means that the cost is lower for the customer to buy the gar the finished garment but that means that there'll be there'll be a load of fabric left that they aren't going to actually use and was never planning to use to make that garment and they would have taken that into account when um, thinking about their cost processes and they would have thought right well actually with that leftover fabric what we can do is actually sell it to a wholesaler who will then sell it on to somewhere else 
so it comes into their kind of planning so it's n so therefore that isn't deemed as true dead stock that is what we know as overstock and that's when a lot of you'll find more overstock when you'll find um fabrics that have been used in the high street that tends to be overstock not dead stock not all the time but tends to be and um I, it's not even the people that are selling it you know the fabric shops sometimes we don't even know and and that is the problem with sustainability for a fabric to be truly sustainable you need transparency throughout the whole production process in order to know whether something is the fabric it's meant to be and whether it's properly certified or whether for example it really is true dead stock so it is a very tricky process um, obviously, I think it's, it goes without saying, it's better this, that it's being used than not being used. So it's better that we're all, um, as home service, you know, using it and loving the fabric. And like I touched on earlier with the linen aspect, you know, we're making garments, um, you know, carefully um, to fit us so that we wear them for a very long time and also we have the capacity to um, mend our, our home garments and for example make them in a way that they'll last longer. Now when it comes to dead stock um, at So Me Sunshine, we do also stock what we would deem true dead stock. So these are from more high-end designers. Now, they might end up with us, and that's because potentially the designer decided to do a trial print. So they might have trial printed, for example, a lot of these designers will, their final collections might be on silk, for example. So they would do a trial print on a viscose, um, and then they might decide to change up the colors or change the scale and so on. Um, and also sometimes it'll be the fact that actually there's been a print error within it um, or that it just doesn't quite meet the final collection or something changes. Or it might be genuinely left over from their collection. So it might be the fact that, you know, they've done their collection and actually this is leftover fabric that they're no longer going to use. And quite a lot of the time, especially when it's high end X designer, legally uh, myself and other fabric shops can't tell you um, what collections they're from. Um, because the designers don't like to tell, to say, but sometimes you can find out with some clever Googling. Uh, this is an example of one of our um, X designer, high end X designer dead stock fabrics at Somi Sunshine. It's actually a linen, um, and we're constantly getting some really exciting fabrics. And what's exciting about dead stock is obviously it comes in, there's limited amounts, and once it's gone, it's gone. You can't reorder it. Um, so, obviously, if we didn't use them in the sewing community, you know, they would eventually most likely be destroyed or landfill or just stuck in a storage cupboard warehouse for a long long time um so that's quite obviously not the best thing and it's not it's quite sad however dead stock can't be deemed as a sustainable option because as already mentioned essentially it would have been better if it wasn't produced in the first place because obviously the environmental impact on producing fabric is so huge that it would have been better that um, either designers um, didn't do practice prints on fabric or uh, didn't, there wasn't any kind of faults and then therefore they don't use the whole roll or um, they only print or, or make what they really need. So all of these aspects would be better for the environment, but I think it is great that as the sewing community we can use this fabric um, and make it really special into a special garment. Okay, so um, in summary, obviously it would be great to make your sewing more sustainable is to use either natural fabrics um, that have the appropriate certifications that I've gone over or to use synthetic fabrics that are made from recycled um, processes and also 
it is advisable to, if in your sewing, to avoid um, fabrics such as polyester, sequins, virgin nylon, acrylic, and that's because all of these fabrics are made using oil, and when they're washed, they shed microplastics, and when they are thrown away and end up in landfill, they take thousands and thousands and thousands of years to degrade. So they're like kind of like the really not great fabrics for the environment and better to be avoided and like i said if you do need some a synthetic fiber for a specific project project sorry then um maybe look to use something like eco Nile that uses um recycles fishnets in order to make um its product now i have also uh, bullet pointed a few things that when, when i was planning this presentation that I thought might be useful for you guys um, on little tips on how you can make your sewing slightly more sustainable at home. So it's looking at maybe investing in textiles that have these certifications. Now understandably I'm sure you're aware that in order to have these certifications they cost more money to produce. Um, so tensile, for example, a certified tensile is a lot more money than um, a viscose twill fabric. And uh, understandably, we can't all, um, we have to think about money. Um, so it's understandable that we can't all think about investing in those certified fabrics. But if that is something that you're passionate about, then maybe it's looking to, um, you know, invest in those fabrics. Um, also, it's looking to maybe change up different um, purchases. So things like instead of buying your polyester th um, sewing thread, looking to buy recycled polyester thread or organic cotton thread. Um, obviously, as sewists, we can refashion unloved items instead of throwing them away. So I'm sure I'm not the only one that has made something and thought, oh my goodness, this does not suit me in the slightest anymore, or I just don't feel comfortable in it. You know, it's looking to, to refashion it and, and, you know, maybe doing something else with the fabric. Um, also as well, it goes without saying that we can mend our clothes and like I've mentioned time and time again, we can do processes within our own sewing that makes the garments last longer. And also like we, it's, it's shopping second hand. So you can obviously shop second hand for fabric or it's looking to buy your ready to wear garments um, second hand, which I've got really into actually um, lately and really enjoy doing and it's looking at how you, we care for our garments. So not just mending them or sewing them in a way that means that they last longer, but also it's to do with how they are washed. And actually the question should be, does it need washing? <laughs> I think we're so used to wearing something and throwing it in the wash, but it's looking, does it actually need to be washed right now? And how can it be washed? Can it be washed at a lower temperature? And can it just dry naturally instead of being put in the tumble dryer? And could we use a more environmentally friendly detergent like Ecover? And also the other thing we can do is um, use things like a guppy bag or a Cora ball, which um, helps to reduce microplastic pollution. Um, so that can be put in the washing machine with your clothes or put your clothes in the bag and that, produ that um, reduces the amount of microplastic shedding when um, the synthetic um, fabrics or garments are being washed. So those are a few little tips for you, um, the things that we do um, personally, all of us at Sew Me Sunshine. And another thing that I've always, I've mentioned throughout is transparency. And I think us at Sew Me Sunshine and a lot of other fabric shops out there are quite transparent about what types of fabric we're selling, where we're sourcing the fabric from and different processes as a company we're doing to try and make sure that the company is as sustainable as possible. So hopefully that has given you an insight into sustainability in the textile industry. Um, obviously, like I said, there is so much that can be covered and I've tried to cover it in a short 
time span and try to give you as much information as possible and hopefully you found it enjoyable and interesting please um, head over to our website um, somesunshine.co.uk we ship worldwide and we've got a, such a lovely array of different fabrics um, some of them that I've talked about today you'll be able to find on our website easily and if you've got any questions please don't um, be afraid to drop us an email okay thank you bye